Hey Globy, today we're gonna talk about airplanes that fly by themselves. Sorry, Mr. Cameraman. They're called Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, or UAVs for short. NASA engineers are hard at work developing all kinds of UAVs for a large variety of missions. One of those engineers is Michael Logan. He works at NASA's Langley Research Center. A small unmanned vehicle is a small airplane that has no pilot on board. They can range anywhere from a few ounces to 200 pounds. Michael's fascination with airplanes started when he was still in high school. I'd go to the hobby store and buy little pieces of stuff and make my own airplanes. I didn't know that much about airplanes, I just knew that I liked watching them fly at the air shows. Being able to build your own things, that's very, very helpful to give you just an intuitive understanding of what airplanes are really like, even at this scale. UAVs come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are very large, and some are small enough to fit in your suitcase. This is actually what we call a pack plane. Uh, it was designed to actually fit in either a briefcase or a backpack. Uh, it's very small. It's about uh, 16 inches on a side. Weighs about uh, three pounds. Has a little camera in the bottom that you can just barely see. And we actually fly from the camera by wearing video goggles. The image from the camera is broadcast directly to a little TV screen in one of the eyes and you watch that TV screen and you fly just like you would fly a simulator on your computer. This is called the Stingray. It's designed to fly at 60 miles an hour, but it can only fly for about 20 minutes. It's a hollow skin. It's got all kinds of batteries and electronics on the inside. It's got two electric motors, one on each side, and it's got two wings that are removable so that you can take it apart and store it in a very small box. This is one of our first long endurance electric vehicles. This was a proof of concept vehicle. It was made pretty much like you would expect to see a model aircraft with the exception of what's on the inside. This vehicle actually can stay in the air for two hours on electric battery power. And it's very, very quiet. You can hardly hear it when it's flying. This particular vehicle we designed so that it actually can take off from a runway or you can hand launch it. This is the wing for the vehicle that you just saw. It's about 10 and a half feet long. As you can see, I'm about 5'8", so it's much taller than I am. UAVs are not brand new. They were used during World War II, which was over 60 years ago. But those UAVs were very different than the ones being built today. Actually, unmanned vehicles have been around a long time. In fact, there were some experiments done with some of the World War II aircraft where they were converted into radio control models that were just very, very large. Typically in the past, unmanned vehicles have either been very large uh, jet-powered aircraft or very large piston-propeller type vehicles that uh, used gasoline or other fuels like that to be able to go and do their mission. With the advent of the miniaturized electronics and improvements in battery technology, we're able to do a lot of things with a small electric vehicle that we never used to be able to do. So that's kind of the, the trend in these vehicles going from much, much larger to much, much smaller, much more environmentally friendly, much quieter, uh, a lot easier to operate. Today's UAVs can be used for a variety of things, and NASA is helping to develop some of the top UAVs at the Dryden Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. One of the most important uses for UAVs is to help firefighters. NASA has a UAV called the Icona. This UAV has an infrared camera on it. Infrared is a technology that is used to see heat. So things that are very hot, like fires, appear brighter than other things around it, such as trees and grass and dirt. Recently, when there were several wildfires across California, the California state government asked NASA to send the Icona UAV to fly over those fires and send important information back to the firefighters. Another important use for UAVs is to see how much damage was done after major storms. When a massive hurricane hit Galveston, Texas, UAVs were launched into the sky to see what everything looked like after the storm. The UAVs were sent into areas that people could not reach because of fallen trees and other destruction blocking the roads. NASA's research on UAVs is being used to help monitor weather, crops, and waterways. Many lives will be saved because of search and rescue missions using NASA technologies. Two Global Hawk UAVs will be outfitted soon to begin collecting lots of information about the Earth and our weather patterns. As NASA scientists investigate new problems, NASA engineers will find ways to help use unmanned aerial vehicles to help solve those problems. 
Wow, Globy, UAVs sure are fascinating. They help us do so many things here on Earth, and soon they're gonna be helping us way beyond Earth. NASA's planning on sending a UAV to Mars to fly around the planet and gather information. With all that technology flying around, I can't wait to see what NASA comes up with next.